Hello, friends. Welcome to this circle as we gather around the group heart, around the group heart. The Hikal group and the 2025 initiative group together holding space for our Jerusalem meditation. Welcome. Over to you, Uta. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our work together with the energy of Jerusalem. In the Jerusalem Meditation Project, we work with the higher potential of the city, of this focal point, as an energy vortex, an ancient reservoir. We can awaken this reservoir and activate the intended higher design. And we do this by intuiting or by tuning to this old landmark. In the meeting last month, someone commented that the divine idea of brotherhood is held in Jerusalem. And that Jerusalem is the ideation of the human heart. A few of us have also commented that this reservoir has a feminine maternal quality. The special higher intention of Jerusalem has surely to do with unity. And um, we are trying to understand unity, not only in psychological terms, but as an energy, as a quality, a vibration, a specific note which can be struck and held and which then brings all else into resonance, like using a tuning fork, as someone has shared after her meditation last month. So what would be the note, the energetic quality of unity? We, in our work, often call it the gold frequency. It's that vibration in which we are all one. And we learn to consonate with this higher note. We learn, it's like learning a specific skill tuning to the vibration which unites us, which actually could be said to be tuning into the, the new bottom line on the planet. And this skill or this, um, this method, this, this way of working, we could see as a complement to the work of transmutation, which focuses on undoing that which divides us, on the glamour. And so much impediments come to the surface now everywhere and need to be dealt with. And we are complementing and maybe augmenting this work by tuning into the higher note, holding it and sounding it forth. It's a different approach to, to dealing with, with the transmutation, 
um, that DK described beautifully was this sentence, destruction of form, not by force, but by the greatly strengthened life within that form. We can also use this golden substance which we access through the Jerusalem vortex um, for creating golden spaces. Spaces in which unity and diversity becomes possible, where healing can take place. When we can sense this golden frequency in our own etheric body, maybe in our etheric heart. And when we can hold it in the etheric heart of the group, then this can ripple out into the etheric body of any group setting or event or world tension. And when it is spread around the world, it touches into the different places and wakes up there the same golden potential. So we as a group learn to be a focus point and transmitter through which this higher energy can be received and reverberated. It's through the harmony in our group that it can ripple out into the world. And then it can be substantiated by the devic forces. So this is a fascinating pioneering work that we will experiment with again today, making another magical act in our meditation and afterwards share our impressions. Okay. So, let us get ready for meditation. Breathing deeply. Getting in touch with our body as the receptacle and grounder of all contacted energy. Taking a moment to sit well in this body. and resting in the stillness of our heart. Our mind comes into a focus in the center of the head. And we stand as the incarnated soul, radiant. Let us now turn our attention towards Jerusalem.
becoming aware of its location on our planet. And becoming aware of an outpost of love and light and spiritual will somewhere within the aura of Jerusalem. And entering this outpost now, sensing its force field of dynamic harmony. Taking our place within it. Allowing our hearts to come into resonance with the group heart. Sense it like a pulsating magnet of pure intent. Letting our minds synchronize into the telepathic field of the group mind. And standing together within the purpose of this project, being a focus point and transmitter for the higher potential of Jerusalem. Perceiving ourselves as one point of spiritual service within the great network of world service. And let us take a moment to take note of the many focal points of spiritual activity all around the planet, radiating and interacting. Let us use our imagination to visualize this network, each point with their specific note and function. Sensing the world group come into unity, into syntony, into coherent function. And as part of this planetary network, let us open now to the field of higher vibration held by the spiritual guides of our planet. Sensing how the hierarchical field interweaves with the network of world workers. 
every day a little more. And allowing our minds and our hearts to expand into this higher vibration. And let us now specifically sense the presence of the Ashramic co-workers who support and guide this Jerusalem project. Set up resonance. In their aura, let us take a few moments, a few minutes in silence to open our consciousness to the divine plan and Jerusalem's part within it. Standing now, consciously, in this potent energy flowing through the vortex of Jerusalem. This golden vibration which heals cleavages and makes whole.
letting it resonate in our being and refocusing in our group at the midway point between the higher world and Jerusalem below. Letting the high vibration settle into the group field. And with our united will to love, we hold it in suspense at a point of tension. And sense it as a golden living healing substance. And now by an act of slow concentration and will, see this golden vibration pour forth into the aura of Jerusalem. See it reverberate in geometric order. See angelic beings, golden devas, substantiate this high vibration, building it into the aura of Jerusalem. We hold the intention and the devas substantiated. Visualize the trees in the city, absorb it and ground it into the earth. See the light in the heavens meet with the light in the earth. As above, so below. And see the aura of Jerusalem glow with warm golden light.
Visualize the hearts of the citizens respond to the light, slowly swinging into this higher order, which is built from the substance of the recognition of the sacredness of each person and the oneness of humanity. Let us imagine the city calling out for oneness. The souls of all are one and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love which underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all humans love. See a golden unifying wave spread out into the whole area of Israel-Palestine. Seeing right relations being established, relations coming into resonance, into higher order. Seeing this golden higher order spreading out further into the entire Middle East. All these countries into Asia See a thread of light connecting Jerusalem with Darjeeling. Just take a moment to sense this connection. See the unifying wave pour throughout Asia, 
and linking into Tokyo. Sensing this link. Sensing the higher note of Tokyo. Spreading further east over the ocean to America. Linking specifically with New York, sensing its higher note, golden frequency of unity, and then further to Europe, connecting to London, Taking a moment to sense this higher note. And connecting into Geneva. Sensing its higher note. And letting it spread out now further all over the world. Unifying wave back to Jerusalem. And we visualize this wave continuing to move and connect and envelop flowing all over the earth as we say the great invocation in Hebrew, Arabic and English. מנקודת האור אשר בדעת אל, יזרום האור אל דעת האדם, ירד האור על פני האדמה. מנקודת האהבה אשר בלב האל, יזרום האהבה אל לבבות אנוש, ישוב מורה עולם על פני האדמה. מן המרכז שבו נודע רצון האל, תנחה תכלית את רצונות אדם. תכלית אותה מורי האנושות יודעים ומשרתים. מן המרכז אשר נקרא המין האנושי, תושם תוכנית האהבה והאור, ויחתם הפתח אל הרע. יהי רצון. ויחדשו אור, אהבה ועוצמה את התוכנית על פני האדמה. من نقطة الحب في القلب الإلهي ليتسرب الحب إلى قلوب الناس وليرجع السيد الآتي إلى الأرض من المركز الذي تعرف منها إرادة الله لتقود الغاية إرادة الناس البسيطة تلك الغاية التي يدركها المعلمون ويخدمونها من المركز الذي نادون بالجنس البشري لينتج التسمين الحب والنور ويختم على الباب الذي يقيم به الشر 
ليجدد النور والحب والقوة التسمين على الأرض From the point of light within the mind of God let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of god let love stream forth into the hearts of men may christ return to earth from the center where the will of god is known guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve from the center which we call the human race let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells let light and love and power restore the plan on earth oh oh Thank you, friends. Let us share our findings, our impressions. Hello, this is Helen from Jerusalem. Um, it's a magical gathering for me. 
um, I had many impressions in this meditation and I would like to share one of them that was prevalent. It is um, a sense of spiritual intimacy, of togetherness. Um, in the meditation, Jerusalem was a, lo a location like an outpost of, of love and light and spiritual will. And entering this outpost, taking place within it, it's like entering a spaceship and meeting there the crew. And the crew are those who are united in, in the heart and in the mind and in the purpose. I really don't know how to say more about it, but uh, the sense of intimate togetherness was very, very strong. And it was also enhanced by, um, by the mantra of unification, where, uh, you know, we begin the souls of all are one and I am one with them. The I uh, was uh, very strong for me, being part of the one. So many blessings and thank you. Hello, it's uh, Desha here from Canada. Usha, you use the beautiful phrase, dynamic harmony. And that had a very golden resonance to it. And thank you, Helen, for sharing, because when the words the souls of all are one and I am one with them. The I for me was Jerusalem. That unity of Jerusalem radiating outwards as this golden beacon of light connecting all the you desires in the world for unity and for harmony and peace in that great dynamic energy. Thanks. For me also, Deja, when when I I said the the mantra of unification, I felt as if I am Jerusalem and I am calling. I mean, we are, the whole group is calling as Jerusalem for unity. Thanks. Hi, <clears throat> this is Fuad from Jerusalem. Uh, I will share with one point from the meditation. 
and uh, which was for me very powerful. Thank you, Uta and, and Rich. Um, when you invite us all to focus on Jerusalem, the energy that I felt was so, it was almost uh, overwhelming. So in a way, and, and now you say, most of you kind of identification with Jerusalem, but uh, it was a very strange experience for me as I felt like in a way I, I had to put some shield because uh, the energy was so strong. Thank you. Uh, to shield yourself or to shield Jerusalem? Myself. Hmm. In Jerusalem. <laughs> I didn't yes. want to I didn't want to I didn't want to avoid this place to Jerusalem, but for me it was overwhelming. Wow. What kind of energy was it? Was it this gold or what, did you sense it in a different way? It was a gold, but a very uh, like honey, not like light. Mm -hmm. This uh, a mirkam. Uh, the texture. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It was kind of beautiful from above and from some distance, but after a few minutes, I felt like I'm within it. And then I had to shield myself. Interesting to understand. Mm. This is Margot calling in from the west coast of Canada. My initial impression at the beginning was solar flares, solar streams pouring into the planet, into the group, substantiating, becoming denser substance. And this is being held by the group pouring through the group into Jerusalem, which in itself was magnetically attractive. This spread into the surrounding area and through the planetary etheric body around the world. With a grounded, vibrating violet blue and sounding the note of unity. The sound and color were creating new forms which began to re-sound. The sharps and flats of dissonance came into harmony, syntony. Geometric, mathematical, rhythmic, enlightened, breathing action. a sense of tuning even higher in the golden frequency and a new dispensation sounded forth as the planetary inlets came into relationship and on to Jerusalem continuing. The frequencies of the great invocation plucked the strings of the group heart ringing forth the song of unity. Margot and I were sitting close together during uh, meditation, which was so beautiful. It was, as someone said initially, magical and joyful. 
and a melody. Uh, the mantra of unification became a song. And I was inspired to quickly write when I came out of meditation, so bear with some of this that may not be right, but this is what came. We are learning to gather in communion with this gold frequency, threading to and through us. We knit unity with these threads of love, a strong and soft web that binds into an etheric fabric upon which the deva of peace can create a manifested form through which the tones of vibration can flow and transverse, creating a song, infinitely adding beautiful notes from all of the different spiritual locations that we touched in our group heart as we traveled to and through this meditation, building a harmonic symphony of notes. The hierarchy adds their vibratory threads and this magnificent orchestral symphony conducted by the masters of the ashram that oversee this work of creating this song of right human relationship, familial love, which is the keynote within the divine plan. Let this be heard by every ear and sung by our one unified voice. It just was this beautiful, beautiful song. And then the only other thing that I'll add is that when Utis mentioned Vortex, I suddenly saw Jerusalem as the center of a healing force. And that Vortex, which feeds the world, became the maternal breast that generously offers true, unconditional love to all. Um, I don't know who was the, who is the, the last speaker. Um, Margo, who is doing our notes very diligently each time, she's she's listing the notes. She's uh, she asks please to send in uh, if you can uh, your written your words in writing. This was Andrea. And yes, I'll send them, I'll put them on the chat. Oh, yeah. Hi, yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and this is Kaja Kaufman. And um, it's interesting to me because this time during the meditation, it wasn't the the energies, you know, color or sense, but all of a sudden I was the inflow of questions and the questions were how do I understand unity how do we relate to one 
and another. When we're wishing something, are we willing to ask for it? And are we willing to realize what it will take within us to change something for something? How we see through ourselves. Can we see within in others things or whatever it is, whatever we cannot see in ourselves? And if not, then what do we see? Hmm. And do we see uh, unity as togetherness? And does it come as togetherness against something? Or can we precipitate it as wholesomeness, this concept of whole, monadic actually concept of whole of which we are part and nothing can be excluded or separated from in reality. Tibetan says in many books, you know, this, this thought that I keep coming across is that it says, I can't, unfortunately, say the exact, you know, um, quote. The, you know, it's my uh, recollection that he says that there is no separation. I separate things only for the purpose of your better understanding. Mm -hmm. So can we see the forces of separation as the, an example? And this one... truly one presence behind all of that. Mm. So questions, no answers. And also there was a, you know, all of a sudden thought of, you know, how, how do we, how do we punish, you know, how do we punish children? How do we punish ourselves? Isolating, does it really work? Or if it does, to which extent? And what it is to love and disagree and keep loving and not supporting, but still loving. What, what is it? How, is it? how does it manifest in our consciousness? in our actions and our emotions. So many questions. Yeah. In the presence of, 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 of the teacher in Jerusalem as, uh, as the presence of that ever there love and liberation that is always like, ever omnipotent and present there distributing to whoever is willing to step in that path. Thank you. Mm. Thank you.
you, Katya, for these deep questions. Unity is so easily said and uh, so often said. But how much we still have to learn. For me, there's really these two, two approaches that I find helpful to try to sense unity as a vibration that we can meet in. And when we co-vibrate, then, as you say, you know, we love and then we can disagree and still keep loving. And um, what Helen, what you said, spiritual intimacy, spiritual friendship, real love that is not only this detached love, but also the love that includes our personalities. And still doesn't make us lose ourselves. And in such an intimacy, then we can bear each other's differences. And we don't need to exclude. And still we can stand in, in our own truth. Humbly. For me, the question of unity has a very simple answer. It's very easy to recognize our unity as humanity when we face something unhuman. When that happens, there is no question of that we are, are humans are one. And that there is no much difference between us. We just have to recognize that what is human and what is unhuman and name it as is. And that is our Kurukshetra. In clear and determined.
This is Lynn in the US. Um, for me, there's a key word um, in trying to bring unity to a personality level. Uh, one key word is appreciation and then taking, trying to take time to appreciate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that fits to what I wanted to say now. Um, this sentence from Asajoli, transform conflict into creative tension. And we can take, yeah, we can do this. One thing that we need to do to allow this is taking time. Taking time with the conflict, holding this in our um, common field. And this is what I felt now, what we were doing, what we are doing in this sharing. holding all this, all these questions, all these feelings um, in our field of loving awareness. This is Annette. What you just said, Uta, um, made me is thought about astrological um, um, going from a square to a, a position. Uh, a square, you have the um, conflict where you are trying to get harmony through conflict, and then you go to the opposites where you have um you are you are um, going from one side to another um to to um, to uh, uh, to a secondary uh, opposite where you are um between two points instead of four um until you are getting to be in in the center of the uh, zodiac uh, where you have the whole and where you have the the peace so that was just my impressions of what you said thank you Interesting angle. Thank you, Aneta. Mm. Hi, this is Helen. And all this sharing makes me appreciate a few things. And one is um, creating the space for such a sharing. Um, to be able to put on the table of the space, the pains. And then, uh, Aneta, what you, what you just said now um, uh, about, uh, about the square, uh, the duality and the foursome, um, I see those energies um, pulling uh, from one point to the other when you have a two pointed and and uh, and uh, and the tension between two points and when you have the four dimensions you can be in the middle the middle of the cross and there you can you know at least uh, 
hold hold the the, 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 the multi-dimensional picture thank you for what you brought Annette This is Deborah in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it's my first time joining this meditation. Um, and in tuning into trying to sort of land in Jerusalem, I I, I had the sensation of both the spirit within and behind it and also the sense of coming through um, a lot of crystallized history if you will um, to find you know the spirit and I felt at one point a strong presence of um, the energies of Master M and Jesus and Muhammad creating a triangle and um, connecting to that our history as the soul of humanity is so long and far and wide and deep and cosmic and it is that one humanity who has volunteered to uh, move through time and space in a redemptive capacity and so it is we who have come down the ages together and created all these forms and all these civilizations and all these religions and all these ways of expressing and creating uh, what's, gr what's growing in radiance within us. And I really saw that then become like a as a central sun within the body of Jerusalem and and radiating out just this many colored many hued creative fire that the creativity and the genius and the heart and the sweetness and the melancholy and the humanity that uh, you know it's always the personality that wants to say this is my land my history but no we really have come down the ages together and uh, with the mission of repurposing I got the sense of repurposing our relationship to history and becoming uh, alive and awake and alert right now to the profundity of who we are as humanity. And um, so it was it was a journey. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to share this journey with this group. Beautifully put, Deborah, thank you. You know we are we are in this journey with uh, um, yeah linking into into the 
humanity through this Jerusalem lens um, for 10 years now. Every Monday, the core group is doing this. And uh, having dealt with the crystallized history, all these layers. And uh, I very much resonate with this repurposing of our relationship to history. Now at this ending of an age and uh, almost beginning of a new age, we have this special opportunity of freedom letting go of things and not yet putting new things. Yeah, thank you. You think it's helpful to remember that um, opposites are on a continuum, on one continuum together. And um, if we can um, realize the essence of that continuum, we are capable of um, doing a synthesis and uh, viewing the issue um, in such a way that we can um, raise it to a higher level a higher vibration. Was this a question? Well, it was supposed to be a statement. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, who, maybe. Who, who I are you? Correct. I, I can't oh, I'm see. sorry. This is Lynn. Ah, Lynn again. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe there's uh, some other part of that that I didn't realize that is an opposition to what I just said. Um, but I, I viewed, I viewed. Uh, oppositions lots of times as, um, as I said, is two parts of a whole, um, a whole issue that um, if we can essentially understand that we can raise it into something that's not problematic, mm -hmm. we can get more. Right, right. If we have, if we can just hold enough space then these two opposites can flow with each other and become a continuum. And uh, yes, when we then see together the whole continuum, there's no conflict anymore. Thank you for putting it so, so well. And we need to do this together. This is the beauty of this, yes, humanity having volunteered to do this again and oh, again. again. Uh, yeah. Yes, and we use the energy of Gemini to do that as a third point. Mm. To allow two opposites to flow and find this as a working situation in the end. Mm -hmm. Who could do that? Yeah, it's good to investigate this together. We need it so badly in the world. We need to get to the bottom of this science and practice it, apply it. OK. 
Okay. Anyone else would like to share something before we need to close soon? Okay, so thank you everyone for this deep inquiry together to be continued. And uh, yeah, see you next month. And uh, Alexander, over to you if you have any announcements. Yeah, we continue our work and we are now in the energies of the new moon and as we move towards the full moon there are many uh, more opportunities for us to come together and hold in the fire, the group fire running. Thank you, friends. Yes, thank you very much.